Hey there puzzlers, my name is Fleb, and today I want to cover how to solve a particular type of logic puzzle called the Star Battle. Now one of the reasons that I'm covering this puzzle type this week is that there's a puzzle next week that's going to require being able to solve star battles in order to solve it. So I thought it would make sense to talk a little bit about how to solve these types of puzzles. This puzzle is written by Grant Fikes for GrandmasterPuzzles.com, which is a free site that posts a ton of really high quality logic puzzles. And because many of the members are members also of the World Puzzle Federation, which is the competitive organization for logic puzzle speed solving, they post times underneath each puzzle. An expert time, a master time, and a grandmaster time. So you can get a sense of how you might match up against other competitive logic puzzle solvers. The site's run by Thomas Snyder, who's been a multiple time puzzle and Sudoku world champion, and is incredibly supportive of the community. It's, it's great. Before we begin, let's review the rules of the Star Battle Puzzle. The Star Battle Puzzle involves placing stars into a grid, like this. The number of stars you have to place varies from puzzle to puzzle, but it's listed here in the upper right hand corner. In this puzzle, it's two stars. What that means is that you have to place exactly two stars in every row, every column, and every bolded region. In addition to that, no two stars can touch each other, not even diagonally. So, Having two stars like this would not be allowed, but also having two stars diagonal from each other like this is not allowed. With all the rules in mind, let's get solving. Because we're placing a small number of objects into our grid, it's going to be harder to figure out large regions like this. So my eye is immediately gravitated towards smaller regions, like this one here. Now the fact that no star can touch each other, even diagonally, means that in any region of four squares, like this here, there can only be one star. So for example, in this region here, one of the stars has to be in these four squares, which means the other has to be outside of it. Now whenever I mark a star, I like to put little minus signs around the star, just to remind myself that no other stars can fit in those boxes. Now there's only two boxes left in this particular region where the second star can go. So what I like to do is add a little star like that. Now if you think about it, if the star is here, there can't be stars in any of these four squares. And if the star is here, there also can't be stars in any of these four squares. Otherwise they would be touching. So we can also mark off these two over here. My eyes are once again drawn to a small region that remains. Here, there's a group of four squares left in this bolded region, and so there's not very many possibilities for how they can go. If you think about these three squares, or these four squares, including this one here, there can only be one star there, so there must be a star here. Now there's two stars in this column, so we can mark off the rest of the spaces there, and fit the last star in this bolded region. Now if you notice, these first three columns have an interesting property. They must contain six stars. There's going to be one star here, there's going to be two in this region, and another two in this big region here, which means there must be a star here as well. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to fit six stars into those three columns. That's a common technique in star battle. Another way to notice that would have been to look at the stars in this column. There must only be one star here, which means that there needs to be a place for that second star to go. Now if you look at these first two rows, there's another interesting deduction you can make. We know there are no stars here, and in all of these squares there are only two stars. But these two rows together must have four stars in them. What that means is that these squares must have two stars. Additionally, because this whole region can only contain two stars, these squares must not have stars. Now looking at the third row, we need to fit two stars into it somehow. There can only be one star here, so the other must go here. There are other ways to get star placements in this puzzle, 
I'm trying to show a number of different ways that you can use logic. There can't be a star there, it would block off both of these spots. Here's another interesting piece of logic in the star battle puzzle. If this star was here, there'd be two stars in this column that would block off this spot and block off that spot. What that means is that there'd be no room for a second star to appear in this region. That's impossible. So the star must go on the other side. Now there only can be one more star in this column, in the first column, which means that in this big region where we have to place two stars, one must go in one of these two squares. Now we have two stars in the second column, so that eliminates even more choices. We have two stars here so we can block off this square. Now only one star can fit here, so one must go there. And the puzzle is starting to fall apart. You can start to make lots of deductions very quickly. There's two stars in this row. This star must go here. There's two stars now in this column. There's only two spaces left where a star can go here. Now there's only three spaces left where a star can go in this row. But we still need to fit two stars into it. There's only one way that can work if they're separated. This region is now full. This region now only has two spaces where you can fit a star. There's now two stars in this column. This row needs two stars. This region only has one star left. This column here has two stars. This column only has one place left where a star can go. And there's only one space left in this region where you can place a star. And that's the puzzle. So as you can see, there was a variety of techniques that we used there. We looked at regions that were small where you could place different stars. We made sure that we filled every row and every column with two stars. And we also used some very general logic about the number of stars that can fit in a group of columns or a group of rows. I really like star battle puzzles. There's, they're a much more recent puzzle, having been invented in the early 2000s. And I think they're a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed learning some more techniques for how to solve star battles. We're going to use them next week in another video, where there's a puzzle that involves solving star battles as the start of it. And so I hope you enjoyed that video, and as always, happy puzzling!